If you owe someone money, the right thing to do would be to pay it back as soon as you're able to. Unfortunately, some people aren't as upstanding, and they would refuse to pay back what they owe even if they have the capacity to do so. It's terrible when that happens. You know, my mom always told me that when you lend money, you have to be willing to lose it because you might never get it back. But why does it have to be that way? Today, we're here to talk about a man named Vijay Malia who was able to make billions, that is until he got himself into quite the scandal. That's what we're going to be talking about in this video, so sit back and relax as we dive into how Vijay Malia made his billions. So, who is Vijay Malia? Well, he is an Indian businessman and a former member of the Raja Sabha, which is the upper house of the bicameral parliament of India. But to really understand how Vijay Malia became who he is today, we have to take a look at his background and how he grew up. Vijay Malia was born on December 15, 1955. He was the son of Vital Malia, who was the previous chairman of the United Breweries Group, and Lalita Ramaya. Vijay went to a private school in West Bengal La Martiniere, Calcutta, and he graduated college from St. Xavier's College, Kolkata with a Bachelor of Commerce degree in 1976 with honors. While in college, he pursued an internship at his family business, and then in the United States. So far, it sounds like pretty standard stuff. It sounds like the typical story of how a rich man came upon his billions of dollars. Well, let's keep going. When Malia was in his early 30s, he met and married a woman named Samira Sharma, who was an air hostess of Air India. They reportedly split amicably, and they had a son from that marriage named Siddharth. In 1993, Malia married his current wife, Rekha, who was his childhood friend. However, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like that marriage was the end game because Malia is reportedly preparing to marry for the third time, this time to former Kingfisher Airlines air hostess, Pinky Lalwani. Kingfisher Airlines, have you ever heard of that airline before? It was established back in 2003, was an airline group based in India, and it was a business venture that Malia had launched. However, prior to this, Malia had been the chairman of United Spirits, the largest spirits company in India, the chairman of Sanofi India, and the chairman of Bayer Crop Science. Actually, he was the chairman of several other companies too, but the ones I mentioned are the most prominent ones. He was also able to acquire several other major businesses, and he was able to grow the United Breweries Group into a multinational conglomerate with over 60 different companies. Having established himself in the world of business like that, it's no wonder our guy was able to build his riches and become one of the most affluent men in India. He earned the admiration, trust, and respect of all his business associates because of his reputation, and he was also able to ensure that all his other businesses were successful. To top it all off, he even won the Entrepreneur of the Year award at the Asian Awards back in 2010. However, everything changed for him when Kingfisher Airlines came around. What happened? And what did Malia do? As mentioned earlier in the video, Kingfisher Airlines was established in 2003. It was owned by Malia's company, the United Breweries Company, and it began its commercial operations in 2005. Fun fact, Malia decided to launch operations on his son, Siddharth's 18th birthday, reportedly as a birthday gift. How's that for a surprise party? The airlines planned to expand from there, and it began its international operations in 2008 by connecting Bengaluru to London. At first glance, Kingfisher Airlines seemed to be doing fine, and Malia positioned the airlines to be on its way to becoming one of the leading airlines in India and across the globe, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. As a matter of fact, the airline had been reporting losses since 2005, all the way back to the time that it was just starting out. To make matters worse, the company attempted to acquire Air Deccan in 2007, which reportedly led to the airline's downfall. According to sources, Malia and the rest of his team failed to follow due diligence, and they suffered immensely from this mistake. They tried to fix the situation, but not much helped. Kingfisher faced losses of roughly $140 million for three consecutive years. Imagine losing millions of dollars year after year, without earning back the money you would need to make up for it. Finally, in September of 2011, it was announced by Malia himself that the company would soon halt their operations, saying that, the company has incurred substantial losses and its net worth has been eroded. However, having regard to improvement in the economic sentiment, 
Rationalization measures adopted by the company, fleet recovery, and the implementation of the debt recast package with the lenders and promoters including conversion of debt into share capital. These interim financial statements have been prepared on the basis that the company is a going concern and that no adjustments are required to the carrying value of assets and liabilities. Now, if it all ended there, it would have been well and good. But, it didn't. The company ended up owing tons of money to banks, and it even ended up owing money to its employees. In 2015, it was reported that Kingfisher Airlines owed at least $1.35 billion to banks. But, although his business venture didn't really work out for him, that didn't mean that Malia couldn't pay it off with his own money and his other business holdings. He actually did have the means to pay his debts, he just didn't. Remember, he was able to set up other successful businesses apart from Kingfisher Airlines. Because of his decision not to pay off his debts, he was then labeled as a willful defaulter or one who has not paid loans even though he has the capacity to do so. An article by The Guardian summarizes Malia's crime in a few words. Malia, the self-proclaimed king of the good times, is alleged to have knowingly misled largely Indian state-owned banks about the fortunes of his failing Kingfisher Airlines, Nearly three years following Kingfisher Airlines' bankruptcy, the State Bank of India and the consortium of 13 Indian banks urged the Debt Recovery Tribunal to move to recover what was owed them. However, Malia had already fled to the UK by that time. Last I heard of him, he sought asylum in the country under Article 3 of the European Convention on Human Rights which is strictly against inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment. He claims that the charges against him were politically motivated and that he offered to pay back every cent. Because of the ongoing legal proceedings against him, we can't tell his net worth. But prior to everything, he was estimated to have a net worth of over a billion dollars. However, most of his assets have been frozen. In an article by the Times of India, Malia was labeled as a fugitive economic offender for his actions. He still hasn't been sent back to India to face the charges for fraud by false representation, conspiracy to defraud, and money laundering that have been filed against him, so we'd have to wait a little while longer to see how his story plays out. However, during his time in the UK, Malia was also arrested as part of a money laundering case in London and was only released on bail. I really want women to know their power, to value their experience, to understand that nothing has been more wholesome in the political process than the increased involvement of women, Whatever it is, understand what you bring to the table is unique and authentic and real and again, the more women who participate the more wholesome the process and that is a very good thing for our country. It's no surprise that such words were spoken by Nancy Pelosi, the first ever female speaker of the House of the United States. She is known for breaking barriers and making history in the political scene, and she has had an impressive political career thus far. It's no surprise that she has been dubbed as the most powerful woman in Washington, a formidable title considering the United States positioning as one of the global superpowers. Right after Kamala Harris, she is the second highest ranking female politician in the United States and is in line to inherit the presidency after VP Harris. I also hear that she's been able to build her wealth over the years. In fact, she's estimated to have a net worth of roughly $115 million, making her one of the richest members of Congress. Now, how exactly did Pelosi reach the stature she's achieved today? And how did she come about her millions and millions of dollars? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in the video up on your screen now, so click away, sit back, and relax. See you in the next video.